Well, hello there again, my friends, and welcome back to Carpo Craft, guitars, cabinets, building stuff, whatever, jewelry. I do a lot of different things, but this year I wanted to attack something totally different, and I wanted to make a successful guitar. And as of most of the videos before this, I've showed the process of making them, my experience, and I'm going to go over where I, what I have accomplished, what I've not accomplished, and uh, what I've learned, and I've found that there is a lot to teach and a lot to learn from others, but there's a lot that's not talked about. And there are a lot of factors of building a guitar that are just left out of videos. Even if you watch, obviously, build videos, they'll say, okay, now the neck's done. You know, well, what did you do? How did you get these straightened out? How did you figure out how to get the frets locked in and everything angled? Well, I wasn't going to make another video until I completed my first guitar. Because it's all talk until you have something done. But I've come close enough to the point where I'd like to at least share what I accomplished this morning. This was the first guitar when I started this channel, uh, when I started talking about building guitars. This was the original mahogany body, which used to have a different a tail up here as well, and it was a little wider. I short <laughs> I shortened the width to get it through my my 13 inch planer or my 12 and a half inch planer, if you will. This was because I just wanted to use the planer for thickness, didn't need to, but that ended up giving it a slimmer profile, and I cut this angle off of it so it'll fit on my leg, and I just love the shape. I haven't found any quite like this, and I like it a lot. It's a very simple, no switches, it's just got two knobs and an input. Now this area is going to change. I will probably use a nicer piece of wood because this is just some, you know, oak ply. But uh, it's done with mahogany, the base that I did five years ago. And then I put a strip of maple in it. And then I've got two strips of purple heart. And it's kind of recessed inside here. And then I've got two of the P-Vase pickups. This is a temporary bridge. It's kind of messed up. It's an older bridge. Um, and these are older P-Vase pickups that came off of an old P-Vase. This was the neck I was working on when I first started the channel. It's resin, and it goes all the way through. It's pretty cool in the black light and uh, the back is maple and it's got a uh, Bolivian rosewood fretboard which I was worried because I didn't round it properly and I finally just said screw it this morning I'm gonna wire this thing up and uh, so I did wanted to prove that I could actually do it for myself and uh, that I could build a guitar. Man, it fits nicely when my legs are kind of crossed because it's got that little groove, kind of like a stand-up bass, right? So if you want to put it on your knee, makes sense, right? I mean, it just, it, wor it works for me. So it still needs some adjustments. It still needs the truss rod adjusted properly. The nut has to be filed down a little better, even though this is a buffalo bone nut that I have adjusted about, you know, pretty well. And the bridge needs adjustment for intonation, which means that how far is it to the 12th fret, then down to here, to the end of the scale. I think it's a 35 inch scale. So at any rate, I got it to work. So I mean, might as well just show you that it works. I'm so excited. The only thing is I can hear a buzz, and that's because the last wire I need to run is from the bridge to the inside of the pocket, and I need to ground that to the output jack. But other than that, that just takes the buzz away. Any guitar that has that problem, it's usually a loose wire, so I'm pretty excited with the way it sounds already, and I haven't even done the adjustments yet. I haven't adjusted the truss rod, I haven't fixed the neck or put any wedges in there. I might have to do some slight adjustments. And um, as I said, learning as I go, you know? The only problem we have is up here on the 12th fret. So intonation is just making sure the 12th fret sounds the same, right? As the string, open string, so. I haven't adjusted those yet, but they're pretty close. But this one, the reason why is because when I push down here, 
it's actually hitting this fret here and causing it to ring higher. So it goes. And you're always going to get a little bit of buzz. It's hard because you're balancing that action of the strings with uh, getting rid of fret buzz. Higher strings, less buzz, usually. So as you see, these two notes are the same. So what I need to do is I'm going to get in here with my fret file and I'm going to file the rest of these down. I know that the last seven or eight frets actually are slightly higher and I don't have a radius sander. I mean, I've been doing this without the actual proper tools, but at any rate, I like the way it feels. I like the shape of it. It's got a nice curve. It's got a nice feel on the hand. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plane this neck down just a little more with some... Uh, with some sandpaper, maybe down to like another eighth of an inch, maybe more. But here's the point. I did it. I made a guitar. I made a guitar that works. And I'm fucking excited about it. I'm very excited about it. And it's a bass. The original intention. So when I started making that bass, I kind of stepped aside from it because I didn't have all the parts. Didn't have all the frets, didn't know what tuning pegs I was using, what kind of bridge. I was still doing research on how to solder and do all the hardware. And so I said, well, I'm just going to start building. And I built a lot of bodies. I have 10 guitar bodies behind me. Just 10 that I've made, plus all the other ones that I copied. And many of these are pine. Uh, some of these are textured. The one I've shown you all with the the block designs in it and everything. I have one that uh, I've been working on that's uh, a lot of these, like this one's textured as you can see. What I did was I used a wire brush and spent a half an hour grinding out all of these grooves. And what that does is gives it an older look and it brings out more of the white between the grains and just turns into a beautiful, beautiful, like vintage looking guitar. And it's got a little rosette at the end. And I, um, honestly, oh, sorry, that's not a rosette. It's something else. A volute is what we used to call it. But anyhow, all of those bodies, a lot of them are pine, and I cut them out of that table. And I wanted to give it time to breathe, because people don't use pine because it might bleed through with, with the sap. This is old pine, like 60 years old, so it's going to hold up. And uh, at any rate... A couple of these were actually copies of guitars that I owned. Like, this one was my original Sanic bass guitar. And I have a plexiglass uh, window over here instead of your standard plastic back because I wanted to be able to see the controls. It's got this entire little control unit. I was thinking about getting rid of it, and then I cleaned it up and put some deoxit, and I hope it works. But this is the battery compartment, and I used Purple Heart for that. And the original Samic pickups were black, but I sanded them down and I painted them yellow. I just like yellow. And then it's got these knobs on here that I really liked, which I might change up for another color too. This is going to be a mock-up of this bass, which was my original first bass. Uh, this, this neck went with the original first bass. And uh, it's got the lightning bolts on it. I think it fits. Uh, it's pretty tight. It's good. Um, so yeah, it's got the lightning bolts and the Samic logo at the top. And uh, I thought instead of building a, a separate neck, I'm just going to go ahead and put the old neck back on. I just really wanted to kind of rebuild it. But the points I'm making here are that I got ahead of myself. I started building all this other stuff, and why? Well, before I finished the bass, I went in to build a guitar. And I built... This was my intention right here. This was to copy my LTD... <laughs> my ESP pickups, and what I wanted to do was duplicate this guitar, the Starburst, relatively, into this guitar. And I'd been copying everything except for the slant. That was the only difference. Mine's a straight body instead of having this taper. So anytime you see one of these bridges, you'll see that the, the neck and the body slope back from each other, and then you have basically these floating, you know, bridges. Well. I didn't even know that when I started. I just wanted to make a guitar that looked like a guitar I had because it was a sample guitar I had. And uh, anyhow, 
I got quite far into it. This is all out of one piece of pine, and I got it all down to the point where I was going to stain it, stained it down, got it ready to varnish, and I've said this before, but there was a peg, a peg in the table, in the most inopportune place. It was the... The complete, you know, if anything can go wrong, it will. The old Murphy's Law just totally applied here. The only peg in the whole thing was right here. And I didn't know until I'd already sanded all this down. And I said, oh, crap. And I made the thing too deep because of the way I'd done it. Yes, I strung it up to test it, and the whole head broke. I tried to re-glue it, epoxy it, it broke again. So I said, here, I've got this really nice purple heart fretboard that's totally ready to go in this guitar and it completely failed me and I failed it rather because of my methodology but just because of dumb luck too it would have held fine if it wasn't for that peg but you don't get defeated you start over you keep going you keep moving forward so the next one I started making as kind of a replacement I said well I'm gonna make a more interesting head and this is Purple Heart and Paduk which has been laminated together don't know how well the camera picks that up but it's it's a laminate and then I decided to carve the neck like a bird. My intention was that when you're looking at it this direction, you can see the top kind of comes out a little bit like a bird beak and the wings kind of curve up. So it was all about seeing it at a certain angle. And uh, it's not very standard. I don't really care if it's standard because I like to do things my own way. So it curves up on both sides. It still needs the finish work on it. And on top of that, I'm putting a zebra wood fretboard with purple inlays, which when they are finally finished, they will be dark purple and they glow in the dark and they are black light reactive and they match the purple in here like perfectly. So this will be the guitar neck, which will go on this, probably this body I have, a Stratocaster body that I'm working on right now. I also have uh, another laminate neck with another zebra wood, which... I'm not necessarily putting these together. Um, I also have this zebra wood neck, which it has a curved joint on it, and I really like the way it looks. Like, if you look at the way these come together, the seams are just gorgeous on this wood. It's so cool. And then I've got this, uh, another Bolivian rosewood fretboard that's going to go on that. But the reason I haven't put them all together and started building on this because I'm not sure. I really don't know which frets I want, or which uh, fret boards I want to put on which pieces. Like, this was like the original P base. I just sanded it down and refinished it. Because, you know, I'm also going to refinish guitar parts. I might as well while I'm tearing them apart. Like my oldest son gave me this Fender, uh, this old Fender Stratocaster neck uh, so I could check it out. And I wanted to point out that these are done differently. Honestly, don't know why they have a skunk stripe on this, but a skunk stripe goes on the back of the neck. It's where they routed out and put in a uh, truss rod, which I use truss rods in all of mine too, but I put them in from the top. I routed out on the top, then put the fretboard down. I found out the reason why they do them in the back of the neck is because when they're doing a one piece neck where the fretboard and radius are all built in, when you see a maple fretboard, it's usually all one piece with the neck. So they have to put the fretboard in somewhere, and or the they have to put the uh, uh, the neck rod, the truss rod, in somewhere. So they put it in the back instead. When you're putting down your own uh, fretboard, it's not really necessary because you can just put it under here and it's hidden. So I don't know why they did both on here, but uh, at any rate, I'm using these parts to duplicate and to make my own, and <coughs> hoping that one day I can accomplish. Oh, I shouldn't forget to show them my main beauty here. This is the one that was intended to replace this one that I fucked up on. And this is the one I'm working on right now. This is maple and walnut. It's a through neck, what they call a through neck. Uh, the lights all jacked up. And it means that there's a central neck that goes all the way through the guitar, which does help with resonance. And then it has walnuts for the sides, which are well glued and locked on. Glue holds better than wood, as long as it's done right. It's going to have two humbuckers right here and here, and then a bridge here. And I kind of cut it with my own design, put a little C in there for Carpo. Couldn't help it. It has a purple heart fretboard, which is cut perfectly and squared. And 
it has a glow in the dark resin, which is gorgeous under black light. It's a very vibrant green, but it also uh, has little bits of ground up crystal. I took a quartz crystal off, off my, one of my ones off the shelf and I actually hammered it out in some paper. So I had a crystal powder and I put it in with that. Call me a sucker for cool stuff. I just like doing things like that. <laughs> and at the top, it's got that old, you know, that LTD top look. It's not quite the same, but um, holes are drilled. Everything's ready. I've got a bone nut in here. Uh, and I just got to put the frets on, which just came in the mail like a half an hour ago. And I'm pretty stoked on that. So I'm going to get the frets on today and finish my first actual guitar guitar. And then I'll have a bass and a guitar. But after that comes the hard work, the real hard work. And that's doing the last steps. Like in any project, you have to do the final sanding, the final tuning, the final intonation to get it just right. And look, it could be a daunting task. If you ever want to build guitars, I say go for it. But the thing is, you're going to realize pretty quickly that, you know, it. you have to keep yourself focused and motivated and positive spirits knowing that there's people in China who can make them for, you know, a hundred bucks. That's just how it is. That's how it works. I've been a carpenter for most of my life. And when I was, say, in my 20s and 30s, I remember when I started doing finish work in carpentry, there's certain things you can't buy. You can't buy a custom handrail and staircase. You have to build it on site. You can buy parts and components. But when it comes to buying cabinets, you can literally buy them from China for 100 bucks a piece instead of spending, you know, $500 per small cabinet for some custom carpenter to build them. And uh, I realized, shit, we're going to get drowned out by China. But it's not that way. People want custom built stuff. And that's my intention. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately. My, my niche, I do not want to build custom guitars to sell for thousands of dollars. I want to sell custom guitars that are affordable. Because there's the entry level stuff that's mass produced. Then there's the high-end stuff that is custom-made. And I thought, I want to find that medium ground where I can make a guitar for, say, five, six hundred bucks. To, or sell for a guitar for five, six hundred bucks that has reasonable components in it and still have high-end guitars as well. I mean, people don't realize it's hard for, you know, if a luthier is to make a guitar, selling it for under a thousand dollars is often taking a loss if it has good components in it. The amount of labor and time and different things you have to know to build one it's crazy. Honestly, I didn't even have the faith in myself a couple years ago to start. And that's why I was like, how the hell do you build a guitar? You know, and here I am. I've got a finished guitar. Okay, not finished, but pretty close. It works. I did it. I learned how to solder. I learned how to build the components and put them together. I learned the difference between humbuckers and P bass and J bass. I didn't know all this. I'm not a big guitarist. I love guitar. I've always been an acoustic guitarist. I love to play around the campfire. I like to play dead songs. I like to play acoustic music. Finger picking is my thing. But I've never been a big electric guy because two reasons I found after thinking about it. Number one, I could never afford the electric guitars and amps and everything. And I just said, fuck it. Uh, well, there's three reasons. And number two, I like the tone of an, an acoustic guitar and the portability and ability to play it anywhere without having to deal with chords and bullshit. But number three, because electric guitars are so finicky. They always have issues. When I was 18 years old, I bought an acoustic guitar. It's an Oscar Schmidt by Washburn. I think it's right, right here, actually. I bought this guitar when I was like 18 years old uh, with one of my first paychecks from some job I had. And it was about 150, I think it was 150 bucks brand new in the store. And I've had this guitar for 25 years. And I've played a lot of guitars, and there's very few I can pull off a shelf and say, it's actually in tune. Anyway, point being, it's not just that. It's stayed, it's been, the intonation has been always been perfect on it. As an acoustic, I would expect that. The only problem I ever had was a broken knob here, which I replaced with a drywall screw. And uh, it's worked just fine for like 15 years. I'm not that guy who has to have my shit fancy. 
And I want to use that to my advantage to be able to make guitars for other people who can say, I want to buy something that looks more rustic and not have to spend for 10, you know, twice as much for 10 finish coats of beautiful spray on quilted maple that's totally perfect and flawless. It's like, that's what I'm saying. With this guitar, I'm afraid to even fucking play it. Look at the back. It's super shiny. I'm like, oh, well, be careful when you're playing it. I'm like, why do I even care? It's a decent guitar. But it needs the intonation fixed, and I just never got around to it. And as I said, I'm not an electric guitar player. I ended up getting it in a trade. And uh, so all that's going to change now. My friend and I are building guitars, and hopefully I'll be taking custom orders for them in no time. All I've got to do is prove my worth, and that'll take a few more weeks, and hopefully get a couple guitars finished to where I can show them to people. But here's my intention. I'm going to hand over one of my guitars to somebody who's a guitarist that plays a lot, and uh, without them knowing, it's my guitar. In other words, find a way to get it into somebody's hands to say, how do they feel about this guitar? On their own accord, not by saying, hey, I just built this guitar. It's my first one. What do you think? Oh, it's great. But really, have somebody. I want somebody to be like, whoa, this is... What is it about this guitar? The only unique thing that I'm doing on this, which isn't very common, as I didn't mention, is a multi-angled neck. It's, it's sloped more heavily on this side than over here. Basically, at the bottom of the neck, on the, basic, on the lower frets here, you've got your standard rounded guitar back. There's C-necks, D-necks, basically just a curve on the back. But as you move up, it starts to turn more into a shape like this, with a, a like an L curve almost, and and it curves. There's a line that goes all the way up here and follows and curves to the middle up here. And what that does is, when you're playing and you move up to the higher frets, it gives your thumb a natural slope to just hang out on, and gets your lets your fingers get up closer. And by doing a through neck, I also curved this area, something that wasn't on that guitar, which really just feels natural when you play up here. But I have to hear that from somebody else who plays guitar. So, at any rate, that will be coming in a future video, and I'll be sharing the completed completed uh, electric as well, six string, which is a little more of a challenge than a bass, because bass you can get away with a little bit lower tolerances. And um, But, hey, we're on our way. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for supporting the channel, and, and uh, if you're interested in building guitars, I would advise you to, to take it uh, take it on and, and give it a shot. It takes a lot of tools, but it's fun. Be well. See you next time.